Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indiscipline Mind podcast for Tuesday, February 9th, 2016. So we got some snow overnight. I'm not sure how much. No more than an inch. Doesn't seem to really be affecting the roads too much. A little wet slushing spots. It was obviously a very wet snow, which is not surprising because the temperature hasn't been too cold. So it is thick. Sticking to everything. The trees are all just enrobed in snow. It's very pretty. Very, you know, Christmas card looking, you know, winter scene where all the branches are white with snow kind of deal. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. Nice, pretty day out, you know. It'd be nicer if the sun was out. It'd be a little blinding probably. But it's still, we're getting some storm of, of precip. I think, or is this, I'm just getting water sprayed up from the guy in front of me. But it's it's cloudy, and as of yet, I don't think the sun's really risen, or if it has, I cannot really see much of it at all right now. Uh, I, in the last 24 hours, between even, probably really, I could say within the last 10 hours, 12 hours, excuse me. I've gotten about two pages written for my big paper, my 15-page paper. So uh, I started a little bit last night. I wrote about half a page of introduction, and I wrote some more today. So uh, I'm starting talking about uh, one of my two, because um, we're, we're, we're contrasting two leaders. So I started working on Teddy Roosevelt. So, yeah, I, I feel better to have that moving Get that moving, get that rolling. Uh, So, yeah, yeah. If I can just keep plugging away at that. I've got about five weeks before it's due, but if I can just keep keep banging away at it, uh, I shouldn't have any problems there. I I am a little concerned about whatever other ancillary papers she's going to give us between now and then, because I know we've got about five different other assignments and a lot of her assignments seem to be a you know a three to four page paper it's just like come on how am I supposed to write a 15 page paper if I'm busy writing all these little three to four page papers but we'll have to see what we can do there uh, I finished yesterday the first of my books for my Hugo uh, series readings I should say readings uh, I finished The Goblin Emperor by um, Catherine Addison. Addison, assuming no L. Which actually, I didn't find out until I, I Googled it here in the car, shortly before I started the podcast. That's actually a pen name for a woman named Sarah Monette. Uh, so I'm going to have to check, I'm going to have to look for her stuff. She mainly writes fantasy and horror, so I don't know that I would necessarily want to read them. Or horror, but she's got some other fantasy that she's published under her true name, then I'm going to have to check that out. But I really enjoyed this book uh, quite a bit. You know, I, I may have talked about you know the basic plot, but I will, I will, uh, I'm going to go into it a little bit deeper here. I'm not going to do any major spoilers. There'll probably be some spoilers, but the things I'm going to talk about are probably things you could you could see coming. So, you know, the basic premise is is the main character, whose name is Maya M A I A, I believe. I'm, I, I'm assuming that's how you pr- pronounce it. But he is the fifth son of the elf emperor. You basically got an elf kingdom and a goblin kingdom, and the elves the elves are. Uh, you know, they are, look, sound like they look kind of like, you know, elves, the traditional elves, you know, they're very pale, they're very tall, narrow-faced, thin, and then you got the goblins, and the goblins are black, and I'm not talking what we would call black, I'm talking pitch black, so the opposite, and big can sometimes be obese, 
and this this elf king at one point had been as, as kings sometimes do took a wife he'd had several that was the daughter of the goblin uh, king or emperor I can't remember what they called him a king and they had this they had this child so he's half elf and he's half half goblin he's kind of a gray color so he certainly stands out amongst the bugs of elves and he was the fifth son and you know this is really kind of all the setup here I haven't even gotten to the, to the plot but at some point when he was a child I think it was supposed to be when he was around eight yeah because the mother died she got ill and she died and thereafter, uh, Maya got sent to a outer holding, to an estate, a little estate out in the middle of the swamps of nowhere, with a uh, cousin, somewhat distant cousin, who was rather abusive. And so years have passed, and now he's a man still dealing with his abusive abusive cousin and, you know, intimidated by him. And a messenger appears in the night. And the messenger is saying that he is now the emperor. The entire royal family is has died in a in a crash of uh, a uh, airship because they've got like dirigibles there for air travel. Uh, so the king and all his sons, except for Maya, who was not obviously along. And so now he is the emperor. So he goes to the capital and he becomes the emperor. But, you know, he's got several handicaps, not the least of which being is that he doesn't look like everybody else. He's got people that supported the old emperor that he's got to contend with who listened to whatever disparaging things the old emperor had to say about him and he, he wasn't he wasn't really educated in the way of princes you know the cousin certainly didn't do anything to really educate him in most things he didn't receive the typical royal education so that he would know everything. He didn't grow up in court, so he wasn't privy to all of the relationships there and all the inner workings. And so he kind of had to he kind of had to start from scratch and you know find some people that he could who he thought he could trust and, and basically learn. Learn on the job, if you will. And so one of the first things he does is distance himself from that cousin. And then he's trying to learn you what does it mean to be what does it mean to be emperor? You know, he has he's he's gotta deal with his coronation, he's gotta deal with the Lord Chancellor that was his, his father's man and shares a lot of his father's viewpoint so therefore is not really you know willing to support in any meaningful way the new emperor so you get a lot of court intrigue in this book but it's not it's really kind of hard for me to quantify because it's certainly not a Game of Thrones kind of court intrigue it is not that bleak. But it's still a very engaging world. I mean, things happen. I don't think it's too far afield to, and here's some slight spoilers, to, to figure out that there's probably going to be a, a, an attempt at a coup and an assassination account, attempt. And both of these things happen.
but he tries to he tries to be his own man and be a good emperor. He doesn't take his father's name and, and tack another tack another you know add one to the number at the end because you know he doesn't have fond memories of his father. His father didn't treat him very nicely, didn't treat him very well. He doesn't like a lot of his father's attitude, so he wanted to send the message that he is not his father and that he's not going to be his father. So he chooses the name of another king in their past that's um, thought to be a very good king, and you know he takes that name. He's, he's the seventh in that line. Are you freaking kidding me? What a moron. Gosh. Pulling out of people when the roads are kind of wet. That's smart. But, and then, and then you know, he didn't grow up being royalty. I mean, he was, but he didn't grow up where he was at a palace and being waited on. So he tries to, you know, so he's more of a normal person who's been thrust in the role of an emperor. And so he, he, he keeps that perspective in that he doesn't in in that he doesn't forget you know what it's like to be a little person if you will who is caught up in the whims of kings and emperors so he's he's, he's he he you know considers the feelings of his subjects certainly more than his father would have uh, as he's as he's doing things and so over the course of the book they're investigating the the um, accident that cost the life of the emperor and his sons. He's looking into. He gets involved in things to like. Uh, it's, it's kind of a funny, funny combination of technology because you know they got airships. For the most part, other than that, their technology is pretty much what you would consider norm, the norm for a fantasy novel, but one of the big one of the big arguments is they've got this you know, mighty river and there's been talk for ages about you know, can we build a bridge over this river that can be created in such a way that it won't impede traffic and there are people that think that yes, it can be done, it should be attempted, and there's other people that just think it's an impossibility, it's too large, the current's too swift, there's no way to engineer it, such it'll happen. And he gets involved in that uh, effort. Well, I'm not going to spoil what's going to happen there. But uh, yeah, so it's an interesting book. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't recorded it on Good Goodreads yet. I probably should. Uh, but I probably would give it a five stars because, you know, I, it really gripped me and I was to the point where it's like, oh, I got some time I can sit and read it. So. Uh, what I'm reading right now is uh, Nathan Lowell's short story with the origin story of Natalia, Natalia Ruggieri, who is the lead character in his next book. An anthology came out. I think it's called Starbound, if I remember correctly. And I'm not going to read the whole thing right now because I've got another big, thick library book sitting there waiting for me. So I want to get. Back. I want to dive into that. This is a book by Kevin J. Anderson, another uh, Hugo nominee. I'm not sure who won it. Their their web pages. I need to look and find out who actually won it. I don't know if they both won it or if like they were in the nominee list and just one of them won best novel. I thought there was just like one Hugo for best novel. But I could be wrong on that, so I'm not really sure. But it's another, at least, nominee from the 2015 Hugos. But, uh, yeah, I'm reading this story now. And then I'm going to read... Uh, I'll, I'll read the rest of the anthology later. But I wanted to read Nathan's story. It was only 99 cents for the anthology, so you can't really beat that price. But anyway, I think I'll let that be that for today. I'll be back tomorrow. And I'll be talking to you then. So... Seeing you.